Next on the Broadway show, it's the royal treatment. I'm catching up with the star of Once Upon a Mattress, the amazing Sutton Foster. Plus, Oh Mary is a comedy hit of the summer. We're taking a backstage tour with one of the stars, Conrad Ricamora. You can build me up, you can tear me down, you can try, but I'm unbreakable. And an exclusive in-studio performance from one of the queens of six. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. The dog days of summer are coming to a close, but the new Broadway season is heating up. Glad you're here for it. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Once Upon a Mattress is back on Broadway. The revival starring Sutton Foster, Michael Urey, and so many more. Sutton was already Broadway royalty. Now she's Princess Winifred. It's a very role that made Carol Burnett famous way back in 1959. I caught up with Sutton Foster at the Skylark. We're going to jump right in to okay. Once Upon a Mattress because we, we know it's a revival. There's been some like really funny ladies and you are right up there with them. How has this been? It's been amazing. It's really been a delight and a joy and it's really fun to play such a wild, unhinged <laughs> character. <laughs> like the There's so much freedom. Yeah. The whole thing has felt so collaborative an amazing cast. We all are giving each other ideas, cheering each other on. It's it's a room full of yes people and it's been really, really great. And audiences have been amazingly responsive. And it's really fun to like be silly. I have a friend that comes and see the show. They're like, you're an idiot. You're ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm like I, thank you. You know, they're like, you're so silly. And I was like, thank you. It but like I do. it lets it all out. It though. does. I nice? get to be completely free and like and do all those silly things that you know nothing is contained. Right. So it's really been fun. I have to imagine there's such freedom in that too of not like thinking. You know, maybe you're not thinking ahead so much or just get to do whatever you want to do with physically. Yeah. With, with, with every part of that. There's a little bit of you have to have a a little bit of mindfulness. Okay. Um, because it is a very physical role. Yeah. There's a lot of physicality, a lot of physical comedy stuff, and I have a a three minute sequence on 20 mattresses and my father is still very concerned I'm gonna fall off the bed. So I have to be very mindful about it. And, and it is, it's, there's a bit of choreography, but within all of it, there is there is a lot of freedom and, and a lot of play. And what I love too about the characters in the show too, I mean, it's Once Upon a Mattress is loosely based on the princess and the pea. Mm -hmm. And I play Princess Winifred. You're not your typical princess who comes to town and hopes to marry the prince. Yeah and has to pass a test to prove that she's a, a real genuine princess. And there's just a bunch of, a cast of crazy sort of characters. There's so much room for each individual actor, comedian, to bring so much of themselves to it. And so it's just a, I keep thinking it's like a, a soup. And right. you have all these ingredients and we just get to make like a really cool stew every night. And uh, it's, it's really, really fun. Were you a princess person? <sighs> Did you want to be the princess or? Not really. Me neither. I know. Me neither. <laughs> Not really. And and one of the things I love about Princess Fred is she has this really great speech at the beginning of um, the show when we first meet her, and she talks about what it means to be a bride. And like she's like, because I've heard all these amazing things about being a bride. And she goes off, and most of it's about like she gets to do a lot of fun stuff, and she gets a pal, and she gets to you know. Go, do everything together and like as opposed to I'm gonna meet my prince right. and live happily ever after or whatever <laughs> but it's more like I get a friend and we get to do fun things <laughs> and like that I thought that was really great my daughter I have a daughter who's seven who's not a princess person right. at all Aww. and I was like do, what do we think about Princess Fred you know do is this a princess we can get behind and I've, I've only got the half thumb I haven't gotten the full <laughs> thumb yet it's the thumb test. As you keep working on, I the, know. We'll as you see. keep working we'll on the role, maybe yeah, you'll, get, yeah. you'll get the full thumb. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's <laughs> fun, though, right? Yeah. But, and didn't we always kind of want to do that? Not always. I mean, I think a lot of us didn't always want to have to be the perfect princess or the perfect bride or the perfect no. girl. And so I, I well, feel like this allows you to be exactly. And say it's and, okay. Well, she just is. Like I think that's what's so fun about this character. She's. She just is. She's free spirited. She's excited. She's um, optimistic. She's adventurous. She's curious. She's different. But, and not knowing 
it's not like she's right. walking into a town going, I'm different. She just is, right. you know? So there's something so freeing about it. And and she's very uncomplicated, which is also really That's fun. That's so nice in this day and age, isn't I it, know. to be uncomplicated? I was like, she's just sort of hopeful and wide-eyed and kind of curious and, and, and game. And herself. And herself. And I feel yeah. like there's that there's that message for, yeah. for all of us, but especially for, for the younger girls yes, too, Yes, exactly, right? that you can be embraced for just being who you are. Carol Burnett originated this role. Mm -hmm. uh, you met her. I did. What was that for you? Surreal, overwhelming. I grew up watching The Carol Burnett Show as a kid. I would watch The Carol Burnett Show and The Muppet Show. In my mind, they were both on the same night. They were both, oh. and I would watch them back to back. So I would always say I'm like part Muppet, part <laughs> Carol Burnett. She was just always has been um, a role model for me. So meeting her was surreal because I still feel like that kid sitting in the beanbag watching The Carol Burnett Show. She held my hand and she gave me her blessing, you know, to oh, play Fred and oh. this role that made her a star. It was really her big, her big um, break was playing um, Winifred in, in the original Once Upon a Mattress in 1959. And so she's um, to be able, and, and the show, you know, means so much to her. And so for her to give me her blessing was a pretty big deal. Daniel Day Kim returning to Broadway in the new play, Yellow Face. It's inspired by real events. It's about a playwright who protests white actors playing Asian roles in Miss Saigon. Then that same playwright accidentally casts a white actor as the Asian lead in one of his own plays. We got to know the stars. To be able to take some of these issues and laugh at them and laugh together, I think is a way to both make audiences think, but also bring us together. And, you know, the character, the autobiographical character named DHH makes a lot of mistakes in the show and then tries to cover them up. And I think it's important to say to audiences today, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. You can come back, you know, take accountability and you can um, come back from mistakes. There aren't many playwrights who have the guts to put themselves <laughs> as a character in their own play, you know. and. Uh, you know, that kind of meta Pirandello type thing is, uh, I think, one of the intriguing things about this show. And I love the fact that David isn't afraid to poke fun at himself. You know, he's obviously a Tony Award winning playwright. He's one of the, uh, our greatest living playwrights. And yet he's, you know, uh, not above uh, pointing out his own flaws and where the mistakes that he might have made. The title certainly grabs your attention. And I think that's kind of the point of the play is to invite that conversation. And I think you will walk out with your friends or family discussing the themes and the conversation and what was it saying and did it say this or I think this. And I, I, I love any film or show or, or play that gets that conversation going in, in life. I think the biggest thing when I first read it, I was like, what's true and what's not true? It definitely toes the line of like a docu-theater kind of thing. Um, so it'll be up to the audience to figure out what was true about this and what was not. Um, so that was super exciting. And I just felt like as a black woman, it's so important to lend my voice to any marginalized group. So I was very excited to be a part of this and so great I was invited to the party. <laughs> This is a Broadway show, and we're back in just a few. Hi, I am Sarah Paulson, and you are watching The Broadway Show. Welcome back to the Moulin Rouge. Pop star JoJo is back in the hit musical, starring as Satine. And she's got a new vlog for us over at Broadway.com called Sparkling Diamond Stories all the incredible wardrobe that Agape keeps watch over. Hello, guard dog. <laughs> no. She's almost 13, but I mean, come on. Agape, you do not look 13. Look at you. You're just a little puppy. Hi, Lumpkin. <laughs> For full episodes of the vlog, you can head over to Broadway.com. Oh, Mary is a Broadway smash of the summer and still the toast of Broadway. It's an insane dark comedy, very, very loosely based on Mary Todd Lincoln. So let's head out to the theater for a backstage tour.
Hi, my name is Conrad Ricamora. Welcome to the Lyceum Theater. I'm gonna give you a little tour. And right here, we have our makeshift green room area where we welcome all of our fancy guests. We've had a lot of them. Robert Downey Jr. just came, Andrew Rannells, Christine Baranski. I didn't even know she was here and then I looked over and I did the gay gasp when I saw her. Oh yeah, Rosie O'Donnell, Sarah Paulson, Amy Adams, Melissa McCarthy. And Melissa McCarthy has seen it twice, once downtown, once uptown. Part of your backstage tour is me explaining my pre-show ritual, which is my special water that my husband makes that has ginger, lemon juice, and honey in it. And he's so sweet, he makes it for me before every show. And it keeps me healthy. Thanks, sweetie. Some set pieces here. You may recognize them if you've seen the show, which you should. That's the stage right over there. And here is my dressing room right over here. Come on in. A few of my show posters from shows that I've done in the past, Little Shop, Here Lies Love. This Shakespeare's r and I did in Philadelphia and I played Juliet as a Catholic schoolboy. Uh, it was a really important show in my development as an actor. It was almost 20 years ago. And then all of my Abe Lincoln memorabilia. My friend Dawn, <laughs> she, she used to work for uh, Stumptown and it's Abraham Lincoln's no more gay coffee. <laughs> Just a cup a day keeps the gay away. And then my husband and I found this painting, I don't know, but at an antique store of young Abraham Lincoln. And then there's my husband. He makes, that's the one that makes the ginger lemon water every day. Boxes and boxes of throat coat and bourbon when you've had a bad show. <laughs> At 15 minutes till, I start doing vocal exercises with this little thing uh, that I learned from Cecily Berry's uh, voice and the actor. And you hit this thing and then you go, pa 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 ba 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 ta 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 da 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 ka 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 ga ga ga. And then I do a bunch of Shakespeare. Cheese balls. Follow me this way. We'll say hello to my best friend who happens to be my dresser. And here she is. Hi, Amanda. You want to say hi? What's it like working with me? Do you love it? Well, absolutely horrible. <laughs> How dare you? You're fired. Um, that's the last time you'll see. I'm glad you got her on camera now because she's fired. When I first moved here, one of the first shows I saw was Venus in Fur. And I saw it from the second balcony. This theater is kind of unique because it has two balconies. And I, I was sitting in the very last row and it was so good, so electric. And when I heard we were moving into this theater, I thought, what a full circle moment. Um, yeah, and I can attest to all of you wondering out there whether a show from the last <laughs> row in the upper balcony is good. Yes, I saw it when I first moved here a certain amount of years ago, and I loved it so much. It was one of my seminal uh, New York City moments, and I'll never forget it. Thanks so much. Come to the Lyceum, and speaking of, I have to get ready for the show tonight, so bye. From Tudor Queens to pop icon Six reigns supreme on Broadway. The Tony-winning musical remains one of the hottest tickets in town and on tour. Now here's another exclusive musical performance from the Broadway.com studio. Hi, my name is Jasmine Forsberg and I play Jane Seymour in Six the Musical. I will be singing Heart of Stone and I love to sing the song because my family is the most important thing in the world to me. And when I sing the song, I think of my mom. <laughs> Restless tide, untamable. You came away 
and I knew a storm could come too. You'd lift me up or let me fall. But I took your hand and promised I'd withstand any blaze. You blew my way. Cause something inside it's so and I knew I'd always stay You can build me up, you can tear me down You can try but I'm unbreakable You can do your best but I'll stand the test You'll find that I'm unshakable when the fire's burn when the wind has blown, when the water's dried, you'll still find stone. My heart of stone. You say we're perfect, a perfect family. You hold us close for the world to see. And when I say you're the only one I've ever loved I mean those words Truthfully But I know Without my son your love could disappear And no it isn't fair But I don't care Cause my still be here you can build me up you can tear me down you can try but i'm unbreakable you can do your best but i'll stand the test you'll find that i'm unshakable when the fire's burned the wind has blown the You'll still find stone My heart of stone Soon I'll have to go I'll never see him grow But I hope my son will know He'll never be alone Cause like a river runs dry And leaves its scars behind I'll be by your side Cause my love is set in stone Wicked is iconic, celebrating 25 plus years on Broadway and beyond. And we've rolled out a brand new vlog over at Broadway.com. It's called Positively Emerald. 
and Mary Kate Morrissey plays Elphaba. Check out this preview. You'll get a little taste of what it's like when guests come backstage to see the show. So I've I had so many people in town this weekend. There was somebody at every single show, it felt like, when a guest of mine is at the show. They see the show and then they go to the stage door because they're on the backstage list. And Jessica Larson, our beloved dresser, she tours them around the stage and gives like the greatest tour. For full episodes of the vlog, you can head over to broadway.com. And that's gonna do it for us, but for tickets or if you wanna check out extended cuts of all these interviews, head over to broadway.com. I'm Tamsin Fidel and this is The Broadway Show.